Yo, what's up and welcome back here to Sindelfingen for the Stuttgart Regional Championships and I am here with my co-caster Barish. Um, we're looking up um, yeah, we're looking forward to a pretty big game in terms mm -hmm. of who's facing off against who and also in terms of the teams that we're going to see. Um, yeah, that's a really, it's going to be a treat here. So first of all, um, how are you feeling? Can you tell us a little bit about the two players that we're going to see next? Well, it's no one else than Jamie Boy, which we have featured on Malmo, which finally, like, which ended up winning the whole tournament. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, a German friend of us, Lucas Müller. Uh, he's he's having gr great success lately. Yes. He's finding himself in, I believe, top 12 in Europe. Really great spot to ensure um, to get his day two invitation to the World Championship. And now they're facing each other. At the sixth round, they both 5 0 here. Yep. Um, and oh, I mean 4 and 1 actually. 4 and 1. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, and we are approaching like the final rounds of the tournament. And yeah, now that you said it, both being 4 1, um, they of course want to win this round. Exactly. To have high chances to top ten in this tournament. Exactly. And um, yeah, it's going to be a very exciting battle between the two. Um, trying to moving on for 5 and 1 because losing this round might mean that they might be out of contention of top 8. Yep. So, yeah, if you guys want to spread the word about the stream, go and tell your friends, hop on Twitter, and um, yeah, link about this. Of course, Jamie and Lucas both um, yeah, active there as well. And um, yeah, they're already in team preview. And um, <laughs> if we take a look at Jamie's team, first of all, or. Well, okay, let's okay you okay let's do it like that. You read out um, Lucas's team, and then okay. we'll try and re figure out how many of these Pokemon <laughs> we have seen um, in competition before. All right, so let's start with Lucas then. He has Cortana, Incineroar, Porygon 2, Gardevoir, Tapu Koko, and that Araquani. And on Jamie's side, so there's an Excadrill, but there's no Tyranitar. Um, okay. There's a Zelazel. There's no Incineroar though. <laughs> that's like. <laughs> was yeah. like, oh, well, there's a fire type with fake out. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, oh, everyone's using that. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll do that too. No. Is it Lazo? I mean, yeah, it yeah. has fake out and it's a fire yeah, type. Yeah, exactly. Other than that, that's it's not a center or huh? Yep. It's missing Intimidate um, and Knockoff as well, I believe. Yeah, um, it, then it looks like Komo is uh, still a thing. Um, yep. So we do see that Mega Gengar potentially. Um, Tapu Bulu and Komo kind of theme. Yep. But at the same time, like, hey, where's that Incineroar? We are seeing the Togekiss that uh, Jonas Vigel is using as well, who, by the way, is at 5 and 0 at the moment. Um, Playing Mikael, Michele Gavelli. Michele, yes, yep. in, the in the next round. So there's a lot going on here in Jamie's well, let's team. Let's focus and on this game, actually. The, yeah, like, I wonder how um, like Lucas will approach this, because of course he must have played against, or he must have practiced against those Komo teams. But he probably has never played against a Komo team that has used, <laughs> like, is using an Excadrill or yeah, a Zelazzle. So, yep. so that can really change things up. Um, of course, Zelazzle does have access to Sludge Bomb, so it can do. Um, some stuff against um, the Tapus that Incineroar cannot really do, like for example threatening a Tapu Lele, that, uh, sorry, threatening Tapu Fini, which uh, usually does a great uh, great job against Kamo. Yep, so the second poison type of course is very um, crucial in that matchup. There's no Tapu Fini, but um, God of War instead, which also yep. pressures down at Kamo and is threatened by two poison type Pokemon here. Um, I didn't actually see what was Trace, if that was Trace. Um, but looking at Gardevoir and um, Porygon 2 facing that Salazzle Gengar, let's assume that it's Mega Gengar. If it should go for that Mega Evolution, it might um, just lock uh, Modo, so trap those yep. two Pokemon in. And then, um, like Porygon, like the matchup from what it looks like for Lucas should be setting up uh, Trick Room and then having his Araquanid taken uh -huh. care of. Yeah, that's one way to play it for sure. Um, however, at the same time, Porygon 2 is a very, very passive Pokemon, so like that being trapped in by shadow attack kind of makes it so that your opponent you give your opponent like a lot of control yep. by doing that because Porygon 2 is not going for like big KOs so um, while it can probably s like stick on the field for a little while Lucas prioritizes getting um, his own fake out on the board and um, having a Pokemon that can really take on um, the Mega Gengar yep. Mega Gengar goes for a safe option here protects not getting any um, poison type attacks getting actually double from two Sludge bombs. Yeah, here. That, that also like has a pretty high chance of poisoning. So even if yep. you have like a switch in. Yep. Uh, but now God of War, it, it couldn't have tra um, copied any shadow attack because it was not active yet in the very beginning. Um, so God of War is trapped now. Yeah. 
uh, facing two poison type Pokemon, hmm. Incineroar can like only fake out the Salazzle. Yeah. So it doesn't look pretty good for God of War, but uh, with being natural bulky on the special defensive side, it might be able to take one slice roll from Mega Gengar. Yeah, and if it does, then it could set up the Trick Room, and then we have Incineroar and Gardevoir on the Trick Room that can really take on those two yep. fast poison types. So, yeah, this damage calculation can be very crucial, and based on the way that Lucas is playing this, maybe he has, um, like, planned this out so that it will work out. So we are seeing the fake out, of course. Now, if the Trick Room doesn't go through, then there's also um, options for, or like, Encore of the Salazzle. But the Gardevoir can take the Sludge Bomb and now will actually go for a Psy Shock. So no Trick Room just yet, but the Psy Shock into the Mega Gengar. Okay, that's very interesting because um, I assume that Salazzle will be faster than Gardevoir. Um, but I think Porygon 2 is this Trick Room option in the back. We don't mm -hmm. know yet if Gardevoir actually carries the move Trick Room here or if it's just uh, yeah, it naturally should, very... It should have it. Uh, it could also be like a very fast Gardevoir here. Uh, or Ally Switch. <laughs> yep, Ally Switch is one option here. Um, so Lazo though should still be faster and threaten that down and now Komol came in. So an easy slash from the God War and then Z move from Komo yeah. uh, might bring Jamie in a really great commanding position. Yeah, that's like a like that's the, the first candidate move I would think about in this position. Yep. Um so I is there even anything that Lucas could do to to like reduce the damage. Um, one option he would have was to protect the guard of Earth, call back Incineroar, switch into Bococo if yep. he has that, because that would totally block like uh, that option from Jamie. So Jamie probably has to assess um, how likely is it that my opponent did bring the Tabu Coco as the last Pokemon. Yeah, but having Porygon 2 revealed already, we can assume that it's actually Cortana on the back, because otherwise... Yeah, um, or the Araquanid, you mean. Yep, yeah, sorry, the Araquanid and not Tabu Coco. But yeah, that was the Protect. Uh, but now Z-Move is coming off, and it's really difficult for Lucas to come back after this Komo got off his Z-Move. Yeah, once again, the clanging Zol Blaze will um, cling clang and <laughs> do a lot of damage to the Incineroar. Gardevoir, of course, being a fairy type, um, not affected by this move at all, but um, Salazzle is still standing strong there. So for the next turn, um, yeah, Gardevoir will definitely be going down, and Komo, -Oh, if it has um, any fighting type attack, will also be able to, to take out that um, Incineroar on Lucas' end. So um, yeah, let's see what Incineroar can do. Um, this might actually be an Assault Vest variant, yep. um, just based on how little damage that did. And um, yeah, Incineroar might be able to get the knockout on Salazzle with um, with a knockoff. But, but instead we're seeing U-Turn. Yep, U-Turn, uh, very interesting move here, switching out um, from the team Lucas was running at the Prague Special Championships, where he uh, finished second. Yep. Uh, he was using um, Assault West. Incineroar with U-Turn, which yes. helps him a lot. And actually this Tapu Coco, very interesting choice to not switch it in into that Z-move to prevent it from huh. coming off, but just showing over the U-Turn. Uh, questionable play here, he could yes, have prevented yeah. Komo from getting that Z-move off. Um, but still, like Coco should be faster than uh, Slazzle. Yeah, and should also be able to take one attack from the Komo, so yep. he has the option to go for a Dazzling Z, but yeah. Except for Komo Big. having poison jab <laughs> next yeah. to do poison type Pokemon unlikely but yes. possible yeah so like big missed opportunity um, as you were saying switching in the type of Coco instead of going for the U-turn completely um, like u turning anything that Jamie would have done that turn and yeah, he didn't do it so I don't know I think in retrospect Lucas probably also like thinking about yeah I could have done that a little bit differently we are seeing the flamethrower coming out here um, from Jamie and yeah but like if Tabu Coco doesn't knock out the Zalazzle which is kind of forced to like Sludge Bomb will be coming its way so Tabu Coco even though it of course would have wanted to knock out that boosted Komoo instead um, has to invest in a move um, into the Zalazzle to take that out first yep uh, but Lucas actually up 3 to 2 Pokemon now uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't look too bad, as expected, to be honest. Yep. Uh, we see Togas coming in, ah. which isn't dealing too much pressure on that Tabu Coco yeah, either. Yeah, and we still have the Dazzling Gleam on the Tabu Coco, which yep. can bypass, bypass the follow, the follow me. me. Very good call there. Um, so, Incineroar and Tabu Coco against Komo and Togekiss. Um, I wouldn't say it is in it isn't Jamie's favor at all. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Boost. Yeah, with, with the Tabu Coco, that was actually the one Pokemon that... Um, that Lucas really needed there. Um, I think with Cartana, like not having a particularly good position against the Zalazzle, um, yeah, things could have gone a lot differently. But with that Tabu Coco and now also reveal, revealing the Electric MZ going um, for a King of All Havoc, which will go into the Togekiss, um, it looks like Lucas has done it and um, yeah, positioned himself well enough. Um, into a position where, like the Komoo against Double Fairy, it's just not working as well as it um, as Jamie is probably used to it working. Yep. 
and we see the niche pick and Salazzle not working out too well here. Um, yes, it threatened down the guard or, but then it was slower. Then you tapu Coco and yep. able to take a Thunderbolt. Um, so in the end, he still has his Komo, which revealed his drag move. Um, Flamethrower. Flamethrower, so I don't expect yeah. Poison Jab to be the last one. No, it should be a fighting type move, either close combo, drain punch, or focus plus. Yeah, even with Poison Jab, like after in the Intimidate, um, yep. that never KOs Coco. True. Uh, so Luca's in a great spot here. Flamethrower going into that protect. Um, and Cinema are dealing a little bit chip damage <laughs> here with that U-turn, bringing in Porygon too. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point anymore, yep. I guess. So. Um, yeah, Lucas just um, really dancing around that Kumo a little Pink bit until. Doesn't have Flamethrower have a role on Tapu Koko? Yeah, he can, he can just like switch out the Tapu Koko and True. Set, set up Trick Room and then um, just absolutely guarantee that even like a critical hit or something yep. won't be able to get the KO. So don't get messed up because otherwise, Porygon 2 and Incineroar facing a fighting type Pokemon is not the best. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as you said, Tapu Koko switching out. Porygon 2 and Cinnamon are now on the field, probably bringing up the Trick Room and then Ice Beams on that Porygon 2 and Clear Blitzes um, should take care of that. Yeah, so Cold Comet coming into the Porygon 2, but yeah, even with a critical hit. Uh, actually, a critical hit probably yeah would have been enough to get the KO there, so maybe that was still a slight chance for, <laughs> for a comeback there. But now, I guess, with Trick Room being set up, um, now that's effectively gone. Um, so yeah, still though, both trainers, I mean, there's not really too much um, of a reason to like just forfeit. I mean, the, the timer is not a factor with Komo teams usually. Yep. So they either sweep for the team or lose um, yeah. soon enough. So, so yeah, if you, if you lose momentum, then it's just so difficult to, to get back into position. Very interesting pick in Porygon 2 though, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just naturally bulky being a good um, role here in this game. Because he doesn't bring a rock on it, so he doesn't really. Well, I mean, in the end, Trick Room is still helping him out. Yeah. So Porygon 2 is not too bad there. Yeah, I guess like Porygon 2 didn't really have like s like a huge impact on the game though. Yep. Like, it didn't really do much, so to say. So um, yeah, I think the other three Pokemon are like what really gave the victory here to Lucas um, with the Gardevoir and the Tapu Koko, two Fairy types, and he didn't even y he didn't even use um, his opportunity to like switch them both in the same time to um, block the clinging uh, Soul play. So yep. um, and still somehow managed to come back from that. Yep. Very surprised, impressed. Good job there, Lucas. Um, but it's not over yet. Certainly not. And um, there's still a couple of more Pokemon or a couple more tricks on Jamie Boyd's team. Um, the Excadrill could be one option, of course. Um, the, the Porygon and the Gardevoir, two Pokemon with Trick Room potentially, um, are something that really limit the options of something like an Excadrill. I mean, of course, we, we don't really know what type of set that could be, mm -hmm. um, but usually, like, if there's a lonely Excadrill somewhere, um, it, it most of the time it's like Choice Scarf. Yep, but, um, that's like, what I assume as well. Yeah, like, Excadrill and Togekiss is, is a combination that goes back all the way until 2013, so um, also a little bit of throwback there. But yeah, like if that Shout was Randy. Yeah, if that was a um, choice car Excadrill, then um, yeah, like it, it makes it even dif more difficult to like go for that Iron Head on the Gardevoir or like the Earthquake on the Tapu Koko, because like with Porygon being so bulky and just naturally um, taking hits, yep. um, it means that Excadrill like wouldn't be able to do much of anything if Trick Room gets set up. So um, yeah, tough choice here for Jamie whether he wants to try and like somehow win with the Pokemon he had. There was a couple of turns, like for example when he double targeted the, the, the Gardevoir in, in the Protect in the first turn, like already losing two moves there. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he thinks that, oh, if I play this a little bit better, then um, I have a chance to, to make it work and to win. Um, on, the other th on the other hand though, um, like it wasn't, ver it wasn't that close, you know? Like in the end, Lucas still had like three Pokemon left and um, could like, as I said, like dance around the Kumo and didn't need to take any risks, so yeah, I would assume that Jamie kind of wants to like switch things up at least a little bit. Yep, and he actually does by leading with Togekiss and Gengar. Uh, well, Lucas is um, staying by with his choice of Porygon 2 and Gardevoir. Um, so actually copies Curse Body, which doesn't matter too much. Download boost might be crucial here, but it's just attack, no special attack, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, so Salazzle is not here yet, or not here at this turn. Um, yep. I'm wondering what Jamie's plan is here because Trick Room mm. might screw him off once again. Yeah, he could go for just an Air Slash, like Air Slash Sludge Bomb, just to like, would probably threaten the KO on the Gardevoir and also yep. do like a decent chunk to the Paragon. 
However, if Trick Room went through the Air Slash, then um, you can just like recover the next turn and you have Gardevoir that threatens the Mega Gengar. So, mm -hmm. actually, I, I really kind of like the, the way that Lucas is approaching this matchup. Um, usually, a lot of players try to like um, beat the Mega Gengar by like out damaging it, but Lucas is just like outlasting it because, of course, Gengar has a lot of special attack, it's very powerful and strong. But like a Pokemon like Porygon or like that Incineroar um, that we've seen before, um, they are able to take hits from it and then um, like hit back. So Sludge Bomb is hitting the Protect of Gardevoir once again and the Air Slash also coming out into that Protect. So this could be a free Trick Room here. Yep. Very interesting play, very clever. It could have worked out if you either attack with a Gardevoir uh, because then Sludge Bomb plus Air Slash would be enough. Yep. But also if he decides to switch out and go into that Araquanid, then Sludge Bomb and Air Slash taking care of that as well. Uh, but this time it worked out. We can assume that this has to follow up with a follow me and then search for me to God of War yep, Zod, for yep. example. But as we've seen, that didn't KO in the first game. Yep. Uh, but then, I mean, Togekiss should take um, Sly Shock easily and then um, Hyper Voice is not dealing too much damage to um, mm -hmm. Gengar either. Um, so both in a really awkward situation where they have maneuver around each other. Of course, Lucas can't switch here. Yep, so we are seeing a Protect, um, I, I like that play, um, Jamie is probably go just going for an Air Slash into the Gardevoir um, to make sure that Sludge Bomb is, will be able to get the knockout there on the next turn. Or are we actually seeing Encore here coming out into the Gardevoir? Wow. Okay, so that is another option um, for Jamie, though I think, I feel like he could have attacked with the Gengar. Maybe Jamie wasn't sure about how exactly the, how um, the Gardevoir and the Togekiss um, mm -hmm. yeah, light up in terms of speed, but now Gardevoir being locked in there, um, by Shadow Tag and also being locked in to there by Encore makes it so that all of a sudden it's not a threat anymore and um, Jamie can start like targeting it down um, the turns where he would expect like the protect to fail and um, yeah target down the Porygon 2 in the meantime. Yep and Ice Beam not dealing too much damage here getting Encore into Ice Beam as well so yep. Lucas is really limited into his options here he can only attack with um, Ice Beam and, and now he also gets as disabled well. so that Porygon 2 will struggle from now on while Godwar can't do anything else than protecting. Of course, you let him protect this turn because yep. it will get off anyway. And from now on, you can, um, once it fails or you just um, just hope that he doesn't get a second protect off, yeah. you can attack into that Godwar. <laughs> I don't know why Lucas is taking so much time, like even like, just a couple of seconds, but there's literally nothing, like there's only one option, which is to go for protect and then struggle with the Porygon. So uh, very nicely done by Jamie sneaking in that Encore disable mode there, um, where you probably wouldn't expect it. Um, with the Togekiss and the Mega Gengar, I think on the Togekiss um, we saw early on stream, um, like none of them had Encore, so uh, very nicely done. But uh, fortunately here for Lucas, uh, that double protect attempt, um, yeah, working out here. Yep, but it's once again an awkward situation where the double protect saved him here, uh, but now he can't protect to outlast the uh, Trick Room. Yes. So he can just easily get Encore again into protect here. Uh, very, very unfortunate for Lucas. Uh, While well Porygon 2 will just keep struggling. Yep. Um, it's a really great spot for Jamie here. <laughs> With a critical hit here <laughs> and that attack boost they got from download actually doing a decent chunk of damage. However, now uh, the, the guard were actually um, outpacing the Togekiss this time around, getting the KO here on the Gengar. Very interesting place here. This was either um, in speed tie. Yeah, or he used, he used or he Trick Room earlier. earlier. Yes. Which is unlikely, but could have happened here. I mean,. Let's just assume he just tricked him. He knew, like, he expected Encore going for that trick room just to let him think that he's slower so that once he gets a double protect, <laughs> he can outlast yeah. that Encore. Uh, I, don't know, what I don't know what is happening there. Um, I think, like, I mean, both, I guess, are in, uh, like, possible in theory. But, um, yeah, it looks like maybe we are looking at a speed tie right there. Uh, either way, though, now both of them have to adjust to the new situation, which just happened to be like, oh, the Mega Gengar, which we thought was safe there, all of a sudden is gone and removed from the field, so there is no more trap in place. And, um, like, all the damage that Jamie was able to do over the time um, could just be recovered by the Porygon 2 in a split second. So, yeah, Jamie really has to watch out. Like, the, ne the next couple of turns, he really needs to make use of the position that he's got himself in now, because um, if Lucas can maintain all his Pokemon together, um, yeah, I think he's in a prime position to take the game. Yeah, who would have thought that after that Discord um, disable Encore combination um, and that Encore uh, God of War that Lucas would still find a way to come back. And yeah. now out of sudden it looks really good for Lucas. Yeah, so we're seeing a Tailwind being set up here um, and we're 
and it's Sorta, so a big setup move here by Jamie, going for the speed and the attack boost uh, for his Tabu Bulu. The Porygon, of course, still struggling. Um, didn't decide to switch out of it though, maybe... Um, yeah, I don't know what exactly he was um, hoping for there, but um, something that can happen from time to time is, like, as soon as you hit the fight menu on the Porygon, like, it doesn't give you um, the option to switch out anymore. So you like need to be aware of that, and uh, maybe that was like one of those mishaps I think, where I Lucas think he actually thought I will switch to my Incineroar. That Porygon will select that turn mm -hmm. on Core will end, and then I have the option to go for fake, for fake out trick room. room. Yep. Yeah, that, that depends on like how much damage. Yeah, of course you still need to go through the the air, air slash. slash. Yep. Yeah. So uh, it's 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 a tough choice to make by Lucas. He decided to leave the Porygon in there. I think he could have done like a similar thing um, by going for for fake out and then like try to set up the trick room with Gardevoir. Um, but yeah, we'll see how things work out. He's actually going to s call back um, the Porygon into Tapu Koko here. So now it looks like he wants to outstall the Tailwind. Yep, outstall, taking away the aggressive terrain from Tapu Bulu. Um, using Fake Out, probably switching out Incineroar soon to Shuffle Intimidate to lower that increased attack stat from that Bulu. Yep. Um, and as we thought, the Air Slash is coming into Tapu Koko. Mm. Uh, resisting damage, not doing too much, but no grassy terrain um, healing. Um, anyway. Yeah, no choice scarf on that Tapu Bulu. Um, that is so common on those teams. So, um, yeah, m maybe once again, like, might be on that X Girl, but um, yeah, you never know with Jamie Boyd. So the Sword Dance <laughs> on the Tapu Bulu, of course, helping it out greatly. Um, being paired up with the Togekiss. Um, just giving Jamie another option that even without the Komo, he has a sweeper. And um, yeah, for this game, it looks like his sweeper is going to be that Tabu Bulu. Yeah, Lucas can't really do too much um, right now because, of course, um, Jamie's still with a speed advantage with the Tailwind. Yeah, just a protect switch. Um, stall out one more turn because if the Tailwind is over, then, of course, Tabu Koko um, can easily take on um, the Togekiss here. Yep. And a uh, Porygon 2 should go down here from a combination, which it no, which it doesn't. Ah, nice, nicely then done by Lucas. Then in sooner would it be able to switch back and deal fake out uh, pressure once again. Yep. Uh, but at this stage, I expect Tabu Koko to switch out here, bring in Cinero back and mm -hmm. intimidate that way. Yep. And then Porygon, uh, based on the we'll damage, probably just go down. Yep. And if Ash either misses the KO or misses the attack at all, Porygon 2 could also set up the crew here. Might be one option. Yeah, if um, yeah, if Lucas decides to do that, and if Jamie lets that happen, because yep. Tapu Koko again can just outspeed and KO the Togekiss. So yeah, this is going to be Incineroar now. There might be a chance where Jamie just goes for like a superpower into that side because that switch was so obvious. But even if he did, um, after two rounds of Intimidate, the Tapu Bulu is back to neutral attack, and um, yeah, Incineroar could be able to take that attack. So. Oregon is going down, and now oh, let's see whether uh, like a superpower is coming out or another sword dance even. Yeah, I would have expected sword dance, but it's actually wood hammer neutral going into that incineroar, no crit, still dealing a lot of damage there. But trick, uh, sorry, tailwind is finally over here. Mm -hmm. uh, Tapu Koko should come back in faster than incineroar, uh, threatening the Togekiss, and then the incineroar crashing down the Tapu Bulu. Although we have to keep in mind that what we talked about is how superpower from that Tapu Bulu might now be enough to yep. pick up the KO. Yeah, now, um, yeah, with the HP set that the Incineroar is sitting at, um, superpower could be enough. And um, Togekiss still has the option to like um, set up Tailwind one more time um, if Jamie was able to get himself into a position where there's like no Tapu Coke on the field or no electric terrain. He does switch in the Komo'o. He's probably hoping that um, we are seeing the Z-move going into that slot, but even then, that does so much damage that yep. then in the next turn, um, like Dazzling Gleam can easily knock out the Tapu Koko, uh, sorry, the Komo'o, of course. Yep. And um, yeah, like, well, the Z-move is essentially like wasted into that slot, it still doesn't really improve Jamie's position too much. Yeah, not at all. And I think that the like, Giga will have it, will deal a lot of damage. Probably over 50% boosted by the terrain as well here. We'll have to see. Yep. Yep. Um, so the question is, what is Tapu Bulu doing this turn? Because a Dazzling Gleam won't be enough. Mm -hmm. yep. He might pick up the KO on that Tapu Koko. That's true. And then we have Incineroar and oh God of War actually in the back. Um, so we have to see how Jamie is trying to get out of this situation because taking that Giga will have a Komo is not ready to take more hits from that Tapu Koko. Yeah, certainly. It doesn't really change the damage calculations there too much because Dazzling Gleam was going to be like a one-hit knockout on the Komo either way. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, Lucas is never going to like attack that Komo with a Thunderbolt unless it switches in. So there still might be like a couple of situations where Jamie can somehow 
um, set up that Komoo or like like protect Komoo this turn as you were suggesting and going for an attack with the Tabubulu. Yep. Looks like that is what Jamie is trying to do here, but um, this was mean, one step ahead. Though. Yep. And <laughs> once again, one step ahead there with a switch in the vault switch, he will be able to get Intimidate back onto the Tapu Bulu, reducing its attack set even further. There's no berry activating here on the Tapu Bulu, so it'll stay or it'll remain at like super low health here and uh, maybe potentially even like knocking itself out on Woodhammer Recoil if it decided to target out that Gardevoir, um, which in terms of damage would have been like the preferred I outcome. Think for going into what was the Tapu Koko, but is now the Incineroar. Taking the hit pretty well, of course, and then Tabu Bulu not going down. Yeah, no, but now fake out Hyper Voice. Yep. Uh, I should just seal the game there and... Um, I mean, actually... Uh, Toga kisses in the back, but what is he going to do? Yeah, I mean, Hyper Voice actually, uh, funnily soundproof. enough, <laughs> won't be able to hit the Komo because it's soundproof. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, like, fake out Psy Shock, I guess. Yep, that should be the um, choice of attack here. Um, but I think there's no way to play around the Gardevoir anymore. Tapu Bulu is intimidated. He might probably switch out. Yes, yep. that's what he do. To reset that Intimidate, bring back the grassy terrain afterwards. The question is, I mean, Tapu Koko is still on the back, but how fast is that Gardevoir compared to that Tapu Bulu? Yeah, Komo, um, Komo does flinch here after the fake out, and um, Hyper Voice, though, will be coming off at least hitting the Togekiss for a little bit of damage. Um, not sure what move Lucas expected, like what exactly he expected. Um, maybe he thought that, oh, there was a chance that the Togekiss could switch in, um, in Komo's place. Um, now though we're in a situation where the Togekiss can in fact go for, um, like a f it could go for a follow me and we could see like close combat coming out from the Komo into the Incineroar. Yep. So Lucas still has to like, um, to make some plays here because actually if I feel like Togekiss this time he should he should switch in Tabu Koko for yeah. Incineroar. Yeah, like if Togekiss sets up the Tailwind though, then the Tabu Bulu in the back. Uh, though Tabu Bulu is at such low HP um, that that might just be like too low there. We are actually seeing a flamethrower coming out into the Gardevoir, and that is probably, um, yeah, the last attack that Komo will use here. Yep. So no Thanks close combat um, or anything into the Incineroar, and, and um, this should be a Tailwind. Yep. Now yeah. he has the top bullet in Tailwind, but he can't go for that Woodhammer play anymore. And yeah. we saw how he has Woodhammer and Sword Stance next to Protect. Um, so the question is, what is his last move? Is he going for Mono yeah, Grass? With the, the critical hit is coming out, but I, I really don't think it matters all too much. Like, that type of Bulu was such, at such low HP, and, um, yeah. What I was thinking he is was that if he, if he has the move um, Horn Leech, Horn Leech mm -hmm. that he could heal himself up. Yeah. But I don't think he will be able to take any Flavix at all from that no, neutral. No, but on the not. other side, let's keep in mind that Lucas only has seven, uh, sorry, fifth. Oh, okay, maybe yeah, maybe he was like trying to like timer stall him there a yep. little bit. So, um, but that's not happening. He's going straight for the horn each actually. Picking okay, up that KO. actually KOs the Gardevoir. Okay. okay, that's not what I expected. So if Togekiss survived the, the last turn, he could have gone for an Ass Slash and um, Horn Leech combination to get back HP. And but then, like if Togekiss didn't um, yep. go down, then uh, Lucas probably also would have played things a little bit more safe. Yep. But there's the handshake. And Lucas like taking switch into Coco instead of like for the Incineroar. Yep. Incineroar actually surviving while taking down a Tabu Bulu and sealing up the second game for Lucas as well. So congratulations to Lucas now seeing himself at 5-1 here at the Stuttgart Regionals in Sindelfing. Yeah, just uh, one more round here and um, looks like Lucas Miller is once again um, able to add probably like another really good achievement yep. to his career list while Jamie Boyd, um, he's done it three times already, three time regional champion. Um, looks like he might just be out of competition here for the top eight. However, he can still keep on playing, of course, for si top 16 prizes and uh, maybe not hey, only like prizes, but if still CP. Yeah, like still CP, of course. And but if um, yeah, he gets lucky there, maybe um, if all his opponents are as strong as Lucas in terms of the record, he might still sneak in there with in the top five. eight with five and two if yep. he wins the last round. That is one option. On the other side, Lucas, of course, now at five one. He has to win that last round to ensure that he's in top cut. But of course, he also has the chance to sneak in with a 5-2 record. Certainly. So, um, yeah, what a great set here. Jamie Boyd, um, some surprises that we saw. The Salazzle um, mm -hmm. did some work. The Togekiss, uh, both with Encore, doing some shenanigans there. But in the end, Lucas kept his cool. Um, yeah, very analytical and um, really nice play coming out from Lucas, beating Jamie Boyd and now, um, yeah, as we were saying, looking in a good position to advance to tomorrow's top eight. All right, guys, then we are just about to get into an interview with Lucas. He's already waiting for us, so stay tuned and we'll be right back. Wow. 
welcome back Pokemon trainers. This time Lucas Muller joined me after a very exciting game against Jamie Boyd. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, very interesting team you showed, very interesting leads you showed us. Um, and one thing I want to talk about is that God of War, Togekiss interaction <laughs> in the second game. Yes. Wo like, was that actually a speed tie? Yes, that was a speed tie. He confirmed it to me. Okay, yeah. so very interesting to see that actually it came down to speed tie, deciding if he gets on court again into protect. Uh, because yeah. we were thinking about if you probably have Trick Room on your God of War and then went for Trick Room that turn, no, which might have explained. <laughs> but it was actually speed tie. Okay, um, okay so looking, w you probably have um, faced a lot of Como teams before on practice online or against friends. This was a little bit different Como team. So what were you yeah. thinking going to team preview with that Salazzle and Excut yeah. yeah, Usually the matchup against Como for me is to knock out Gengar first and then my Gardevoir and my Coco can deal with Komo. Okay. So that was the same goal for this match. Okay. And most of the Komo teams usually have Incineroar yes. next to the Gengar, but he had uh, Celestial, which is faster than Incineroar. Mm -hmm. So I li uh, decided to lead with Gardevoir and Porygon 2 and switch turn 1 Incineroar in for, for Porygon 2 to have the sacred pressure in the second turn. Okay. And then I can Total take there. out Gengar with my Psyshock. Okay. That is one option. Um yeah. So instead of switching, like leading with that God of War Incineroar, you're just switching out immediately. Yeah, that's one option there. And God of War, I think overall great pick. We are thinking if he's able to take the Sludge Bomb, which he was actually. Yes, um, he always does it. Yep. And then, I mean, s second game was really crazy, coming down to double protect and then speed tag for the Encore. Um, yeah. But were you expecting maybe extra drill to come off? And what kind of extra drill did you think that might be? Yes, uh, I kind of expect the extra drill for game two. Okay. And I ex uh, expected it probably to be Scarf, because mm -hmm. most of the teams have a Scarf Bulu or something else yep. that was Scarf, and I expected either Bulu or Exeril to be Scarf, and on that team Scarf Exeril ma made sense. Okay, so I but that. Mm, I don't only want to talk about this match, but like about your person in general, because uh, when I was thinking back, I think your outcome performance was um, runner-up at the Birmingham Regionals. Birmingham. Yeah. yeah, and from there on, you had like so much success lately, finishing second in Prague. What is your feeling going into a tournament now, being in the race for top 16, like being in a pretty solid spot at the moment? What is your mindset going into such a big tournament here? Yeah, I think uh, now I'm kind of a top player, okay. as many people <laughs> think. <laughs> and now it's when I go into a tournament, I feel kind of a pressure, because okay. people expect me to do well, because yes. of course I'm right now in top 16. And that's a bit of a pressure, but I hope I can play well. Yep. But yeah, and, and focus. Before Prague, you had like some um, lower performance tournaments, but like second place in Prague and now being 5 1. Um, is there like any specific player you don't want to face in your last round? No, not really. I, I think my, my team is really solid. It okay. has, has good matchups against basically everything, mm -hmm. and I can do it with everything. That's, that's a special thing I like about this team. Because uh, the in the past few months or weeks, I didn't really find a good team in VGC18. Okay. But now, with this team and my team from Prague, one month ago, yep. this is what I like and what I can play. And I think it's a really strong team. It's nice to see that you're confident in your team. Um, and once again, first of all, congratulations and good luck for your last round. Yep. We hope to see you once yep. again in top cut. And of course. one thing, can I give shoutouts? Sure, of course. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you anyway. Yeah, I want to give shoutouts to my good friend Benjamin Tan. Okay. who won the Ma Malaysia special event last week, who okay. helped me build this team and gave me some advice on it. Mm -hmm. And I also want to thank my friends, for example, Heinz, Jonas, Serkan, Pepsi, Feist, and all the others who helped me and support me. All right. Thanks. Very great words there. Guys, thanks for watching so far. We will be right back. Stay tuned. And our last switch round is about to start in about 15 minutes.